What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Bedlam Crown TV. This is episode eight. I'm happy to have you here. Today we're going to be talking about one of my all-time favorite bands, the Melvins. They recently put out a new album, I'd say probably two, three days ago, something like that. Maybe even a week, I'm not sure, but I've literally been putting off listening to it because of the fact that I wanted to share it here with you today. So I'm excited because the Melvins, uh, you know, I like so many bands. Hundreds probably, without exaggerating. And I have what I consider my holy trinity of favorite bands. I have three top, top, top favorite bands. And first and foremost, number one favorite band ever of all time, period, is Primus. I have been a fan of theirs for ever. A close number two is Corrosion of Conformity. Love COC, one of the greatest bands of all time. And also close for my second spot is The Mighty Melvins. So we got the Holy Trinity for Bed of Crown TV, Primus, Corrosion of Conformity, and I just said that. Primus, Corrosion of Conformity, and Melvins, who we're going to be talking about today. Um, and in no particular order other than Primus is my numero uno favorite band. But uh, before I go any further, I wanted to give a shout out to some people that have either liked my videos, commented on them, or have become new subscribers. Thank you very much. I want to say your name. Uh, Alex Fiketti? Fiket? Alex Fiket? I hope I'm saying that right, brother. But thank you. Thank you. We got another one. Pecet. P-E-C-E-T. Pecet. 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 Something like that. Thank you. Sorry for slaughtering it again. Uh, Rangar2503. Appreciate you. You know who you are, Rangar2503. And I think, oh yes, Jaden Coetzee, Coetzee, Katza, Jaden Coetzee, Jaden, whoever you are, my friend, you're my friend now, and I appreciate you subscribing to my channel. So, again, we're going to be talking about one of my all-time favorite bands and my top three holy trinity of bands, Melvins. I don't even know where to start because these guys are phenomenal. They are rule breakers, rule benders. They have no... It's kind of tough to explain because to some people it's complete nonsense and to other people it's complete brilliance. I'm on the side of complete, complete brilliance. I love Melvins and what they do because they challenge what music is. I mean, they are some of the tightest musicians ever, literally and truly. I know for a fact they've been booed off the stage, which is absolutely ridiculous to me. Uh, I saw them open for Tool one time, and I got to say, the crowd wasn't too into it, and I was just back there, yes, I love you, I love Melvins. You got King Buzzo, Buzz Osborne with the big hair. It's amazing looking. He's awesome. He's kept it throughout his career. He's had different lengths and different things going on, but he's always done it, and it's beautiful on him. Thank you, Buzz. Don't ever shave it off, or you end up like me with a shaved head because you got my ball, and you don't want that. <laughs> uh, Dale Crover, longtime drummer, an amazing drummer. Right now they have Stephen Shane McDonald uh, holding down the bass for him. Phenomenal bass player. He was in Red Cross. Now, all three of these guys have done other things like Van Thomas and Dale Crover's band with the album The Fickle Finger of Fate, which is amazing, and so many others. They are just three very eclectic and talented dudes, and I had the honor of meeting all three of them. It was probably two years ago now in Las Vegas. They played a show there at the Rio Hotel and one of the clubs there. I got to meet all three of them, including at the time because they had two bass players, Jeff Pincus, uh, who was holding down the bass with them, and he was amazing because he used to be in Butthole Surfers, and I got to meet him as well. He and I had a conversation about D.B. Haynes. They had recently talked about football picks, and he was sharing that with me. So they're just all very cool, grounded, friendly, approachable people, and it was honored to meet them. I even got to see them back in the day when they had Lori Black playing bass for him at Soma in San Diego, and that was in the early 90s. I was trying to think how many times I think I've seen them live throughout my life. And I want to say, at very least, eight. 
possibly 10, maybe even 12 times. I have seen them a lot of times. I saw them several times in San Diego, saw them several times in Salt Lake City, and I've also seen them in Las Vegas. They're just one of those bands that, unless I'm on my deathbed, I'm going to go see them live when they come to a town near me. Uh, they've had many personnel changes over the years, but the two most constant players are King Buzz and Dale, the uh, longtime runners in the band. But one of the unique things about them is they're always pushing genre, and they're always, for example, sometimes Buzz will write lyrics that may not seem to make sense, but they work for the sound of the song. So it sometimes my sacrifice of meaning, just because the words themselves, how he's put them together, sound cool in the course of that song. So I just think that's very innovative and fun and pushing the envelope and not willing to compromise who and what they are to put out music they want to hear, that they want to play. And they put on a really fun show. The last, I think, two or three shows I've seen, well, at least in Salt Lake City, the two shows that I saw them there, I was literally less than eight feet away from King Buzz the whole time. It was probably bugging him, but I was right there in front, chanting away and singing along and just having a great time. It's when they played with Napalm Death. That actually was one of the time. That was really killer to see Napalm Death, that extreme kind of band, with a different extreme kind of band in the Melvins. So today we're going to be talking about a song. I want to say it's either called Hoond or Hund. It's from the new Melvins album. The album is called Working With God. I love that title. Um, I didn't even really look for a video that would have them playing because it just came out and they probably haven't played it live really anywhere because of the fact of the pandemic. So this is just going to be a video that says Melvin's working with God with the tornadoes in the background. But we're going to listen to this song together. This is my first listen of this song of anything on this album because of the fact that I was waiting to watch it here with you today. So without any further ado, here we are, Melvin's with Hoon. I gotta say already right off the bat, it's very distinguishably and recognizably Melvin's, but it's not like any other song they've done. You can tell it's them, but it's different. I love that about these guys. Have you ever heard a voice like that? The dude can sing and make it right in your face as raw as he wants it, but tone it back and have it be beautiful in your ears. Let's keep listening. Wow. Like I said, I haven't heard this song yet, but the way Melvin's builds up, you know there's about to be a solo. I would be willing to wager a cheeseburger that there's about to be a killer solo. Are you hearing that?
every time I think I have the goddamn video fully uploaded and completely buffered. This happens. My apologies. I have got to somehow download the goddamn video so that that doesn't keep happening. I think we're back on track. So let's continue on with the song. I'm not joking when I say I'm a fan. I've got the same sticker on my car. Badass. Love the Melvins. Most people are familiar with like Revolve. Uh, that was one of their hits, if you want to call it that. They did some shit with Jello Biafra back in the day. That's really cool. Um, you talk to any of these guys with the Louisiana sound, like Down and I Had God and all that, they will at COC, they will attribute part of what molded them as a band to the sound of the Melvins, in particular, Gluey, Plo uh, Gluey Porch Treatments album, Killer album. I like all their albums. My favorite is probably Stag. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe Bullhead. I don't know. There's so many great albums. So many great songs. them so much. I will say that I thought that was fucking killer. Melvin's, to me, in my eyes, can do literally no wrong. I am a fan. I have been a fan since I was like 16 years old. Believe it or not, the first time I ever saw them play was in San Diego when Lori Black was still in the band. They played at a place called Soma when it was way cool when it was on 555 Union Street in downtown San Diego. Uh, that's when you had Mike working the, the security. And now, uh, oh, I forget the guy's name. That was the owner. Uh, but anyway, I got to see them there. <laughs> and believe it or not, I hadn't heard of them. I had only heard of them. And my friend Robin and his brother Jeremy and I went down there to check them out. We paid Triple G three bucks to watch our car. He was a homeless guy. That was what he said. He watched our car. He said, if anybody touched our car, he'd fucking break their nose. So thank you, Triple G, wherever you are. Um, but yeah, we got to see him with Lori Black when she was on the bass still. She is Shirley Temple's daughter, believe it or not. Uh, amazing bass player. Um, but it was funny because my friends and I tease because when we saw the Melvins that night, King Buzz was wearing pink Converse, and that is literally why I had this sticker made in honor of that show. Pink Converse, pink Melvins, and the funny thing is, is I wasn't really into it the first time I saw them. Like I said, we just went down there to check it out, and uh, they started playing, and for whatever, at that young age, I didn't catch the vision. We were bored, and we walked out. And then sometime later, when I started really getting into them and giving them a good listen, I was like, Jared, you are an idiot. You are a complete idiot for leaving because that was would have been a killer show had I stayed. So anyways, I don't know what else I could say about these guys. I am a true, genuine fan of Melvin's. I love their sound. I love their innovativeness. I love the quality of their music. I love the fact that they are constantly putting out albums. They have no set. We're going to do an album every five years or every three years for whatever record label, this or that. Most of their stuff as of the last several years, has been on Mike Patton's label, Ipecac Records. Uh, there's a lot of great stuff on his label. Um, I would say, if you like this song, there are dozens of killer songs just like this that might even be better for you, might be worse, I don't know. 
But check out Melvin's. Do yourself a favor. Check out Melvin's. Give him a listen. If you don't like it the first time through, just listen to it again. I promise you, once you allow yourself and your brain to catch what's going on with them, you will be a fan the rest of your life. So Melvin's, this one's for you. Thank you for the years of great music. I have been a fan since as long as I can remember, pretty much. <laughs> since my early teens, late teens, whatever. But I will be a fan till the day I die. Appreciate you for checking into my channel, watching my show. Please feel free to leave your comments below. Don't think about it. Just do it. If you want to tell me something good, positive, negative, ugly, obscene, wonderful, whatever it is, feel free to leave your comments below. And I will do my very best to respond to you and acknowledge you every single time on these programs here on Bedlam Crown TV. This was episode 8, brought to you by the letter M for Melvin's. And until next time, my friends, I will see you. Uh, maybe I better figure this out. Uh, I'll see you later. <laughs>